I was commentating at the weekend. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Uh, it was nice to be in Ottawa. I haven't been there since I was a little kid. But man, there were some amazing fights at the weekend. And that main event, I mean, we, we need to get into that. Um, yeah, fight of the year contention. I mean, definitely the best fight I think I've seen this year. Um, Cowboy Cerrone, a fucking madman. But that's why everyone loves Cowboy. He never doesn't bring it. When's the last time you said, oh, that was a really, uh, what a shitty phoned in performance by Cowboy Cerrone. It just doesn't happen. Um, and what was pretty much a dominating performance against Rage and Al. Rage and Al is the, sh the fucking man. Okay, Rage and Al is the man as game as they come. Um, but I believe the first man to ever drop Rage and Al Iaquinta um, had that nasty front kick of uh, a la, was that Anderson Silva, Vitor Belfort? Um, yeah, yeah. Just nasty. It was a really fun fight, dude. And Cerrone you know, proving that he's always game. I know you talked to him in the cage afterwards about the possibility of a, a, a Conor McGregor fight, but you're there first and foremost. What, let me ask you a question. What's the difference being there and commentating versus either watching at home or just spectating, even spectating in person? Cause you're looking at it from a much different angle. Cause I feel like when you come back to these shows after you actually commentate, you have a different sort of insight than anybody else. Well, to be honest, I mean, of course, the view is better and whatnot, and I'm the guy controlling the commentary if I'm commentating, but it's it's not that different, if I'm honest. I mean, yes, of course, you, you're right by the action. You can feel the blows. I mean, I'll be honest, Saturday night, I was sitting there watching that fight, Aya Quinter and Cerrone, and I was thinking, even though I've had, you know, at one point I had the most fights in the organization, but I'm sitting there thinking, these guys are fucking crazy. They're crazy, even though I used to do it. But that fight was just absolutely insane. I mean, Donald Cerrone, I mean, I, I, and Ally Quinter, of course. I can't praise these two guys enough. It was a, an unbelievable fight. Donald Cerrone, the thing that impresses me about him is that, you know, it looked to me like, you know, it was beginning to see the end of his career. Remember, he, he racked up three losses in a row at welterweight. And to be fair, they were against the best opposition out there. Robbie Lawler, former champion. Uh, and there was two others as well. Uh, sorry, Darren Till went on to fight for the belt, and the third one, I forget who it was, but uh, oh, M Masvidal. So, um, you know, but so you could be forgiven for starting to think that perhaps, you know, the end is nigh for Donald Cerrone, maybe his best days are behind him. But people talked about how having a child has reinvigorated him and remotivated him, and it certainly seems to because when he took on that Alexander Hernandez in his last fight. Here was a guy that was undefeated, looked sensational. Cerrone just put on a beautiful performance and, and took him out in the second round. And then again, coming into this fight against Ray Janal, I, I'm a big Cerrone fan. I love the way he fights, but I just thought, you know, Al's going to be too much for him. You know, he hasn't got as much miles on the clock. He hasn't been through as many wars. He hasn't had the stoppages, the knockouts, you know, just hasn't got as many miles on the clock. But, uh, but again, Cerrone came out and he just looked sensational. He looked better than ever. His kicks, I mean, that was the game plan from what his corner was saying was to, you know, use the kicks a lot, slow down Al's footwork so he can't get in and out. And it worked a treat. It was a tremendous game plan. But his kicks were so fast and so sharp and so painful to just even block. You know, Ally Quinter was blocking those kicks on his hands and they would have fucking hurt taking them on the legs. I mean, Cerrone beat the fuck out of him with the leg kicks and it, it, it was beautiful to watch. Of course, Al... He had massive, massive moments as well. He wobbled Cerrone a few times. He got in there and, and definitely gave a real good account of each other. But um, as I say, it's going to take my hats off to both of them because in that fifth round, I mean, Al was a mess. He'd, he'd gone through a lot of punishment. He had blood pouring out of his nose, but he was still trying right to that final bell. He wasn't phased. He wasn't scared. He didn't stop trying to go forward. But, you know, on that night, Cerrone was just too much for him. 
Yeah, it's it's funny because there are more parallels. Like obviously, Cerrone just um, completely blew past your record for the most wins in UFC history, and that's fine. Nobody's even counting anymore, to be honest with you. But you see the parallels <laughs> later on in your career, where Cerrone is sort of having this—I don't even say resurgence. That's not the right word, but it seems like he's now hitting this stride where people are talking about him being in title contention. They're talking about these big, big money fights, um, and this is at, you know after people are like oh shit are his best days behind him and this is a very similar conversation that people had about you and we were we were doing the radio show while that was all happening i remember it's so it's so funny because we did the radio show and even at the time i didn't know you i just kind of thought I was like all right well bisping is probably mentally winding down his career as well because he's picking up other things to do and he's looking for you know not it is nothing to do with who you are as a fighter but it was like in you know at that point in everyone's mind we we're going like oh i don't even know if the title was on your mind at that time and then all of a sudden you know you got a few big wins and you're right there on a short notice you get a title fight i kind of see a similarity with donald cerrone where now after that fight everyone's like oh shit, dude donald cerrone might be the next dude in line for a title shot yeah absolutely i mean you've got to remember cerrone as long as he's been around all the bonuses that he has the most wins the most fights the most performance night bonuses i mean they're great stats to have um he's never been the champ never been the ufc champion and a lot of people talking about the fact he has a kid now you know and for me that was definitely one of the things that fueled me as a fighter and some people when they have children they say listen i'm, I'm going to retire from fighting I've, I've seen some fighters say that they say it's not fair for me to put my body through that sacrifice but, but i'm on the flip side i'm like well no i'm doing this for my family and now cerrone obviously i mean listen he's already got his legacy everyone knows that he's a, a legend of the sport uh, he's a fan favorite, you know, and he'll definitely go down in the history books. Well, he set many records. Yeah, likely a future him, Hall of Famer. Um... Definitely. Definitely a Hall of Famer. But for him, there's probably a few things. A, he said he wants the title fight. After the fight, we asked about Connor or the title fight. You know, he said he gave up on Connor. He said he wants the title fight and then the money will come. Um, but for, for him, obviously he wants to be the champ and he wants to set his legacy and he wants to stack as many chips as possible so he can you know that's why we do it we do it for money and having a kid is a great motivator to push yourself and continue getting better and he seems to be taking shots you know i thought when he got stopped off darren till i thought crap has his chin gone well it certainly hasn't because i like him to hits as hard as anybody in the lightweight division that's a fact and Cerrone took all his best shots. Yeah, he was wobbled once or twice here and there. But um, but as I say, he took them and fired back. So, I mean, at the moment, in the uh, in the lightweight division, you know, there's a log jam, obviously. Poirier is going to fight Khabib Nurmagomedov. That has to be the next fight. That's a given. Um, so, I'm not sure. I mean, I think this opens the door for Cerrone versus McGregor. I think after that fight, Saturday night, I think after the fight he had... It, in Brooklyn against Hernandez. That was another great performance. Um, so I guess now the, the ball's in Connor's court if he wants to take that fight. Yeah, I mean, well, we'll see. it's all up to what Connor wants to do. And it sort of sucks to have to, you know, be at another, you know, wait for another dude to sort of make that decision. It's not even like the UFC. There's really not much else uh, Cerrone can do except for be exciting. You know, it seems like Cerrone's sort of trying to figure out should he be complimentary toward Connor? Should he shit on Connor? He doesn't know the angle to like take in order to get that fight. Um, but shit know, on him. You just think shit on him, talk trash, all day, make fun of his fucking country, his family, whatever it is. Well, that's what uh, Connor is doing to Khabib. He was at it again already today. I just looked on Twitter this morning when I was having my coffee and uh, Khabib, I think it was Khabib, posted a, a picture or maybe it was UFC, UFC 242 or whatever it is, they're going to be in Abu Dhabi. And it listed some of the fighters, Khabib and a few others. And Connor went on and commented, oh yeah, you're, three of the people on there are all dirty juice taking little rats. So he's talking shit to Khabib indirectly. Right. Because so, he's obviously trying to get that rematch, you know? Yeah, I, uh, you're talking about having a kid and how it um, kind of either motivates you or, you know, I had a similar thing because when I when I got my ex pregnant, I had a, a, a you know, one of my friends, Ari Shafir, a great comedian, um, a lot of MMA fans know him as well from uh, Joe Rogan. He's one of Joe Rogan's guys. But Ari was like, dude, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta abort. No way. You're gonna, you're gonna quit comedy. That's it. You never, you're never, we're never gonna see you again. And, you know, he was half kidding, I think, I hope. 
Um, but <laughs> by the way, I'm making eye contact with my son right now as I say this, which is so fucked up. <laughs> but abort. 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 But he, uh, you know, some people do go that way, and you know, they all of the same reasons that you take that risk to become a fighter. It becomes apparent. Everything becomes into focus, and you go, "Oh shit! My job is now to protect that child." And you have one of two paths. You go like, "Well, you know what? There's no more taking a risk. Everything I've been falling, saying I'm going to fall back on. Now I kind of have to do that because I can't risk anything because I'm risking something, and I'm sort of putting my kid's livelihood and his lifestyle on the line, which is sort of selfish." Or you go the other way where you say, "This is now." biggest motivation in the world and I cannot fail I do not have the opportunity to fail now um, and I just I've always had that way of thinking um, and I think that you know that's probably what's going on with Cerrone right now where it's like everything else has been like you're running a race without a finish line there's no real goal in mind except for like making some cash you know living your dream is a great thing go ahead yeah I, I, I mean the thing with Cerrone is this is what he's always done though you know so it's not like he's got to reinvent himself I mean he's been, he's had the fun, he's had the ride, he's got the fame, he's no doubt earned a lot of money over the years as well. Um, all he's got left to do now is win the belt, you know? And that was kind of the thing with my career, it was very similar. You know, I'd done well over the years, but I'd never won the belt, and that was highly motivated for me. And if he wants to, I don't know, I mean, every time he walks out for the fight, he looks at his son, he goes and gives his son a kiss. I used to do the same thing, by the way. No reporters writing stories about that, you fucking pricks. Yeah. <laughs> I, I I used to do the same thing. I'd always go find my kids, I'd give them a kiss. But no, nothing. Taroni does it. And everyone's, oh my God, it's so awesome. Every time he goes and sees him, gives him a kiss. I'm like, yeah, I used to do that with my kids, but whatever. You weren't interested then, were you? But um, no, listen, of course, he's got his kid. He wants to be champion. If you have not already, hit that subscribe button with its notification bell and leave a comment in the comment box below of what you thought of the video and tune in for more on MMA News Outlet.